There is a lot of talk and quite a few videos out there comparing the different picture profiles of the Sony cameras, but it's all a bit too subjective and opinion oriented for my taste, so today we're going to take a look at the scopes and see what's really going on. Let's get undone. What's happening everybody, I'm Gerald Undone and resistance is futile. Today we're gonna look at three things. The first is the noise level and dynamic range of the popular picture profiles for Sony for video using the a7 III. And when I say picture profiles for that first part, we're gonna focus on the gamma selection. Second, I'll give you my pick for the most well-rounded picture profile. And third, I'll dispel a couple myths about picture profiles in general along the way. So let's stop monkeying around and get right into the samples. So for each one of these, we're gonna have the gamma that was used here, which in this case is movie, or like I said, you could have set picture profile to off, as well as the ISO and the f-stop. And then we just have some increasing power of lights. And then over here, we're gonna have the scopes. Now we're using the Luma waveform right now, which will show us a few different things. Each one of the lights is obviously gonna show a step here. And then this example would be what happens when something is clipped. So we can see there's four different lights that are all above 100 or above 255, and they're just showing us flat clipped lines. And over here, we can see that they're just bright white lights and they're pretty much indistinguishable. And then as it comes down to the bottom here, this bar is gonna be our black level. That's basically the rest of the black in the scene. And the higher that goes, the higher the black level will be. And also the noise may encroach upon it or overtake it. And also this will count as a stop itself. But if say this bottom stop here, as you can see the stop on the left, you can't, you can't make it out. It's buried within the black level. And this stop is pretty much being eliminated by the black level as well. This is what you would look for to decide if this gamma is gonna give you enough information to work with for what you're trying to do, as well as the noise values. So the next one we have here is Cine 2. Now Cine 2 is one that I personally like. But uh, something that I should let you know is that all of these first ones were done at ISO 800. And that's the reason primarily why both Movie and Cine 2 have some clipping. Now Cine 2 has less clipping. There's only two of the stops that are pushed all the way up over 100. But uh, the reason why we used ISO 800 is because S-Log and S-Log 2, S-Log 3, they require a minimum of ISO 800. So in order to evaluate these things evenly, we're gonna do ISO 800 first, but then we will utilize the lower ISOs that we can for the picture profiles that allow it. But let's start off with just the ISO 800 ones. So Cine 2, uh, we have a better a better shape here, less contrast, it's not being pushed to the extreme. And you know, we get decent lower stops and decent upper stops, but again, we could set a better exposure because we're not required to do ISO 800. Now let's go to uh, Cine 4, just to compare. Similar idea, the, the top two stops are being clipped, and we get kind of a similar roll-off, but there's there's two differences here. Cine 4 has more contrast, which again we can see because the middle area is being pressed apart further, and uh, the black level is lower as well. If we jump back to Cine 2, we can see the black level is higher, but there's a disadvantage here, which is that on Cine 4, our lower stops are having difficulty, you know, erupting through that black level. And if we look at the image itself, we can see this, the lower areas here in the shadows, there's fewer of them that are pronounced compared to the Cine 2, which we can clearly make out some more of the shadow areas better. So those are the trade-offs there between Cine 2 and Cine 4. Both are okay. I think that Cine 2 gives you more to work with and it's much easier to just push down those levels afterwards and you'll actually end up with a cleaner result. But we'll get into that when we have the better ISO settings. All right, let's jump ahead to this one, which is S-Log2. Now we can see with S-Log2 that we're nowhere near clipping anymore using the exact same exposure settings of ISO 800 and F2.8. We're only reaching 80 IRE and it's rolling off you know, rather nicely. And let's just compare that real quick to S-Log3 over here. S-Log3 is giving us more shadow information. We're getting higher bars. The, the higher the bar that you're seeing here is basically gonna suggest that there's more information there. So as you can see, these stops here are reaching higher than if we go back to S-Log2, they're lower. So we're gonna get more shadow information out of S-Log3, but the highlight bars aren't reaching quite as high as S-Log2 is, so we'll get more highlight information out of S-Log2 but there's some trade-offs here. If we just kind of look at the noise in the scene here, and then we jump over to S-Log3, we can see there's clearly a lot more noise in the scene. And when we zoom out, the black level, like we said, is different. And so this is gonna have an impact where, yeah, we can see more shadow tones, but and fewer in S-Log2, but the image is dirtier. Now the common recommendation for shooting S-Log would be to shoot it more exposed and then bring it down afterwards if you want in order to clean up your shadows. Because if we bring our shadows and our black levels down, that's going to hide a lot of that noise. 
but it's still not going to fix it perfectly. So now let's jump over to this one, which is still S-Log3 and it's still ISO 800, but it's F1.4, so it's two stops brighter, and that allows us to get our highlights to come almost all the way up to 100. And this is sort of a, I would say, I don't want to call it a myth, but something that's commonly done is the idea that you can just overexpose your S-Log and then you just push it down and it's fine. It depends on what you're shooting. Let's push our shadows down here and our blacks down. So now our noise levels are a little bit better, but now we're getting to the point where we're actually losing almost a full stop of the shadows. Now, the advantage of S-Log is that you're probably gonna gain that stop up on the higher end, and if we clean it up a little bit more and push it even further, you know, we can get a pretty nice looking image, but we've almost completely lost that last stop now. And this is, this is just what happens. Generally, if you wanna get rid of the noise from an S-Log image, you're gonna have to probably crush your blacks out, which is fine, again, if you're shooting, you know, a nice bright outdoor scene or something with a lot of light, but it doesn't work the greatest in a dark scene because it can kind of get muddy and crushed and hard to really make the details out. Okay, moving right along, let's jump over to HLG. Now this is HLG3 and this is probably my favorite gamma for the Sonys and I'll explain why. So first off, you'll notice right away that we get all the way up to the 100-255 while keeping the ISO 800 f2.8 setting. Uh, and then also we can come all the way down here with a nice smooth shape and our bottom stops are doing pretty well to keep above the black level. And HLG also has the advantage, unlike the S-Log where we can have a lower ISO just like we can with the Cine Gammas. And so let's jump into the lower ISO situation now and talk about reducing some of the noise. So this is ISO 800 f2.8. If we jump over here, this is HLG3 again, but ISO 200 at f1.4. So it's the same exposure, but we've shifted those stops onto the f-stop instead of on the ISO. And this is usually good for blackened areas. But something interesting about the HLG profile is that it doesn't have as big of an impact on HLG as it does on other gammas. The 200 one, obviously this is ISO 200, so this should have lower noise. And I'll just give this a bit of a play for you. So look at the noise over here. And now let's do that same thing, but on the ISO 800 one. You might find, I'm gonna switch back and forth now, that it's not that big of a difference. And this is one thing that's great about HLG is that even if you have to kind of get there with ISO, despite what I was just saying about S-Log, is it doesn't punish you as much as other gammas do by getting there with ISO. Now, a quick thing, let's just compare to the other HLGs. HLG3, ISO 200, F1.4. Let's notice the shape over here. Now let's jump over to this one, which is HLG2. You'll notice that there's very little difference at all. All I see is that the very top stop is just being pushed down a little bit. So let's jump back. See it's a little bit higher, a little bit lower. And then the other difference would be the black levels and the noise. Let's take a look at HLG3, look at the bottom where the black level is, and then HLG2. So it just comes up a little bit. So I would just say that HLG2 is just slightly inferior. It has slightly worse blacks and noise and slightly worse whites. So. There's not really any reason to use that one in my opinion. Uh, I would just stick with HLG3 based on what I'm seeing here on the waveform. Let's go to HLG1. Now that's just even worse. If we compare that even to the second one, this is two, this is one. The black levels go up even higher and we're clipping two and a half to three stops on the upper end here. And then lastly, HLG straight, no number. Uh, it's very, very, very similar to HLG3. Let's jump back to HLG3 and then just HLG. So the shape is fundamentally the exact same on the two of them, and we're getting very similar values, but the black level is higher on the straight HLG one. Now, this could indicate to you that maybe you would be able to push that down a little bit and get uh, you know better noise reduction, but there is one thing to consider, which is if we look at how much our lower stops are coming up out of the black level, and we compare that to HLG3, we are getting a little bit a little bit more separation on our lower stops on HLG3 than we are on HLG. So even if we did have more room to bring that down, we're also gonna be bringing down our lower stops as well. I don't think that one or the other here is gonna really make it or break it. I think that HLG3 maybe is slightly, slightly more versatile, but they're very, very close, but I wouldn't use HLG one or two, I, I don't really see much reason for that. Now let's jump over here, I've got some better exposed Cine ones. This is Cine four, I was able to use ISO 200, the lowest you can go on Cine four is ISO 200, and with Cine two you can go down to ISO 100, and then like I said, HLG is like 125 or 160. So if we look at this one, it's definitely not clipping like it was earlier, where was our previous Cine four, was this one, right? Yeah, so see we have this pushed all the way up. So we have an advantage of not having that happen, but we still have the issue where there's definitely more contrast, and a lot of our lower tones are are, you know, being faded into oblivion. Let's compare that to a better exposed Cine 2. Same idea as what we saw earlier where there's more 
more shadows. We can see them here versus the Cine 4. I actually kind of like the way that the highlights are being handled here with Cine 2 over the Cine 4 and the lowered contrast. Again, I feel like it's going to give you more to work with afterwards than Cine 4 would. You could argue that Cine 4 would be more deliverable right out of the camera, but it's not that hard to add a little bit of contrast and change your black and white levels. So I think that Cine 2 is going to give you more to work with and you can have a full stop lower ISO, which will probably make a difference. So if we were to just drop down the blacks a little bit on Cine 2 and the shadows a little bit, and then compare that to Cine 4, we still have more more shadows. We still have more different stops in the darker area. Now you are going to get better dynamic range on the S-Log profiles. If we compare this Cine 2 which is pushed down to this S-Log 3 which is pushed down, we can see that you know we're getting better dynamic range out of the S-Log 3, but the S-Log is harder to work with. And there is still something to be said about the fact that the S-Log might band and cause blotching artifacts sooner than the Cine would just because of the 8-bit limitations of the smaller Sony mirrorless cameras, where with Cine I don't think that you're really going to find that happen as easily and again you don't even have to push it as hard to grade it because it's less extreme than S-Log to begin with. Throwing this all together though I think I would still go with the HLG which as you can see here I didn't push this one down at all so let's just do a quick comparison between the HLG3, the Cine 2 push down and the S-Log3 push down. So this is HLG3, this is S-Log3, and this is Cine 2. Now we can definitely see that we're, we're getting better dynamic range out of the HLG3 and S-Log3. But uh, the HLG3 compared, which by the way, I did nothing to it, compared to the S-Log3, you know, we're getting most of what's already been done to the S-Log3 with the HLG3 right out of the camera, and we can achieve lower ISO so we don't have to push down as far. And if we look closer into our darker areas here, let's zoom in here and compare this to the S-Log3, we can definitely see that we're retaining more with the HLG3 than we are with the S-Log3. And again, with that whole 8-bit banding blotchy artifacts thing, the HLG will be less susceptible than the S-Log to that because we don't have to push it as far. And so to answer my second point where I said I would tell you what I think is the most well-rounded picture profile gamma, I would use HLG3 and as a runner-up I would go with Cine 2. For HLG3 I would use the BT2020 color and not the Rec. 709. The BT2020 just has a better rendition and allows for more versatility and more applications in the future and it's pretty easy to conform down to Rec. 709 in post. Okay, now point three I said I would talk about a couple myths. One of the first ones that I see a lot is that it depends which picture profile you actually put your settings in. So some people say like, oh, if you're going to use, you know, Cine 2, make sure you put it on picture profile 6 because it that stuff doesn't matter. Now, it, it is possible that on your camera there are different settings for the different picture profiles that are deeper in, like in some of the details and advanced stuff, where if you just change the gamma, that it's going to look different than just changing the gamma on another picture profile. But if you make the settings the same, exactly the same, on any picture profile, it will look the same as any other picture profile with the exact same settings. But if you don't believe me, I've got a couple just side-by-sides here to show you. This one here is Cine 4 set to picture profile 1, everything exactly the same. And this one here is Cine 4 picture profile 9, everything set exactly the same. If we look over here on the scopes, which we would see if there was a difference, and we click back and forth, they are exactly the same. And then for another example, providing an actual image, here it is again. This one I think I used picture profile 2 and 8 just to mix it up. And so this would be picture profile 2 and this would be picture profile 8. And the scopes look exactly the same and the image looks exactly the same as well. When I click around you can't even tell them clicking. So trust me, there is no difference if you set all the settings the same regardless of what picture profile number you use. Now I also went through and looked at all the different color modes and tried to make some evaluations on that to pass on to you. but. I'm not going to bother with this because color is so subjective and I'm not going to tell you what might look better to you or not. Do whatever you like the best. There's a lot of different color options in there. I can say which ones I think are, you know, the most versatile. Like I told you the BT2020 I think on HLG3 is the right way to go. And for the Cine ones, I actually think that Cinema Color might be, it's a little bit flatter and might give you a little bit more to work with. Some people like Pro Color and that kind of thing, but I think if you want, you know, a better starting point, a more open starting point, I think cinema would be the way to go. But if you want some specific look to come right out of the camera, that's going to be up to you. And this is a perfect point to talk about my final myth, which is that adjusting the knee to have a point of 80% and a higher slope will really improve your image. And my answer to that is, not really. Uh, there are definitely some looks out there that people try and sell or, you know, give you downloads for, LUTs and that kind of thing, where there are specific settings that would probably work best with that LUT. But I think just a sort of a general statement, you're more likely to worsen the image than improve it 
by adjusting those things. These aren't magical options that are going to increase your dynamic range or widen your color space. And I think in many cases, they're advised by people that I don't think fully understand the downsides. For example, crowding a lot of information into that 80 IRE area, if you have lighter skin like me, can make for really murky highlights and blotchy skin tones. So my advice is to leave everything on auto or zero or whatever neutral setting there is and stick to the more important things like white balance and nailing exposure because those actually will have real serious advantages on your final image and your dynamic range. The one option that is good to adjust though is the detail. I would push that all the way down to minus seven because sharpening is usually best left off camera and done in post where you can adjust it after the fact and non-destructively. But if you truly want to get good at choosing profiles and grading your footage, you're just going to have to practice and base it off of what looks good to you. There's no quick fix. And I think starting with a neutral HLG3 with BT2020 color or Cine2 with Cinema Color is a good, safe, versatile launch point. But if you drew different conclusions from these tests based on your own needs, then that's okay too. There aren't any miracle settings out there that you can just put into your camera and not have to think anymore. It's always going to require a thoughtful attention to detail. But hey, that's what makes it your video and not someone else's. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. Now, all right. I'm done.